first, kids. There you go. Oh, well, we've got our makeshift scaffolding here. So what we're doing right now is just securing it to the ladder just to keep it from shifting. So this is providing downward pressure, which holds the board in place, keeps it from slipping off. Should do pretty well. So now we'll be able to work on today's project. Today we're doing something really exciting. We've been talking about it for a while. We haven't told you about it, um, but we're making some really cool skylights. Yeah, so these are not necessarily traditional sort of skylights. They're and... skylights for tall people. <laughs> I'm not tall, so it's not really for me, but it's kind of for me. I'm tall. If I wasn't uh, squatting down right now, it would kind of look like this in the frame. Uh, but I just kind of uh, get down just a little bit so that I get in frame. Yeah. He's got a foot on me. So we put up some makeshift scaffolding. Um, so one of the problems that we've seen in a lot of schoolie conversions is that when tall people like me, I'm six two, are standing up in a schoolie that doesn't have a roof raise and has, you know, the traditional height of the windows that uh the line of sight is directly into the middle of the shoulder, so the rounded part of where the, the roof happens right over here. Mm -hmm. And so when you're cooking, when you're standing up and you wanna look outside, you gotta like duck down to look outside. So. My dad came up with a really cool idea. He said that this might be a bit of a pain in your butt, but it would save Brian from always like having to look down, like if he's washing dishes and like have to bend over to see at the window, um, this would save him. And it will also let a ton of light into our living space. So we're putting in six skylights. Yeah, and so these skylights, they're going to wrap around the curve of the edge of the top of the roof of our beep mobile here. Mm -hmm. um, we've never seen anybody else do this. Uh, so if you have any tips that we might not have done that might have made this easier, definitely <laughs> let us know in the comments. Yeah. Or if you think this is cool, let us know if this would help you in your school conversion or you know, maybe it's just something interesting. Maybe you could be laying on the couch and be looking through the roof right <laughs> there. Like that would be really cool. <laughs> or our counter. Yeah. The kitchen counter. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Stargazing on the kitchen counter. That sounds pretty hot. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so today, uh, this is going to be a huge project. I'm not sure that we're going to finish today. <laughs> no, probably not in this video um, because this is kind of the planning process, but we're going to call this one Skylights for Tall People. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's get figuring out how, how this mathematical thing is going to go together because there's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of math involved. Today. Yeah, and last time we did math together, it didn't turn out amazing. So like, it's like the first time we ever got really frustrated with each other. So I'm gonna try to be a better person today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna try to be better at explaining myself. Deal. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be better at explaining myself because like I think a lot of like geometrically and like all sorts of crazy stuff going on. But whenever yeah. I t try to say what I'm trying to think, not always does it come out the best. Yeah, and I'm kind of like a free flowing spirit where I'm like, why can't we just trace it and cut a hole? But it's not really one of those situations. So, so some of the things that we have to consider is where <laughs> is the hole going to be cut in relation to how big the, the Lexan is that we're using. We're using polycarbonate because it's essentially bulletproof. It's the same stuff that they use in bulletproof glass. So um, when we talked to the company that we bought it from, they said that it'll handle hail just fine. And they also threw in that it'll handle up to a nine millimeter bullet. So we don't anticipate having any issues with that. However, every once in a while, you're at some celebration and people are shooting their guns up in the air. In you don't Texas. want, yeah, you don't want a bullet to come down and go through your skylight. So 
Definitely use Lexan for that yeah. or poly. Lexan's just the industry like brand name I guess it's for a brand it. name, but polycarbonate is actually the stuff. Is the actual yeah. material, yeah. And if you want to use this stuff, you can find that in our description. Yeah, we'll drop a link to the same stuff that we're using. Darn tootin'. All right, All right so let's get to it. Where does this all start exactly? We gotta do some math and I gotta get up on that scary scaffolding. We got some scaffolding here. All right, let's go check it out. So that's what needs to be cut out. <laughs> Yikes. This is uh, probably the most nerve wracking part because you only really get one chance at this. And if it doesn't turn out right, then you gotta put sheet metal over it, rivet it in and be quite a pain. So. Measure six times, kids. Maybe do one and five eighths so that it's back a little bit from that, that edge. But we can measure all that um, after we pop the chalk line. So let's do the chalk line and then start to, and we can use a pencil to like sketch where it's gonna be here, here on the roof. All right, so I just put kind of like a, a, a V symbol right here where the point on the V that's pointing that direction, the chalk line will be held right on in the middle of that point. So you'll come hold that side and then I'll go over to that side and I'll pull it tight and then I'll pop it one time. You get one time to pop. Cool, let's do this. Time to go up on the scaffolding. Ooh. What do you think? Um, I think we did a good job. This is scary AF up here. <laughs> What'd you do? I just drew one line. <laughs> <laughs> this is the size of our hole. 21 by 21. And the polycarbonate will overlay onto the skin of the bus by like uh, three quarters of an inch. That was special. I'm scared up there. Okay, so the first scared. thing that we did up there was pop a chalk line and it was at, originally we were measuring one inch off of the rivet, but we decided that the opening needed to be another inch and a half up because of the opening of where the polycarbonate was gonna like shine through essentially and we needed to make sure that we cut on the right spot. So we actually measured up another inch and a half. So two and a half inches off the rivet gave us room for our, uh, for our framing on the inside was our main concern that we would have room for the framing. Yeah, and we need a spot for the screws to go. So we need to think about what our overlap is and where the screws are gonna sit and um, make sure that we get it watertight because these are pretty big holes to put into our roof. Yeah, so um, after we popped that chalk line, we went ahead and put our template up against the bottom edge of the chalk line, which is gonna be our actual opening, the 21 inches by 21 inches. Mm -hmm. And we traced around there. And yep. what do you think about that? It's exciting. We've been talking about doing these skylights for a while, so this is really cool. Um, next up, Brian is going to test the tools and see which one cuts the hole the best. <laughs> 
Yeah, so let's uh, start starting off with, angle with the angle grinder. Diamond blade. Yeah, so we're going to use a diamond blade on that uh, because I think that we'll have a really nice plunge and just be able to walk along that line. So we've got a test line in the middle of our main cut that we're going to do um, just to see how it goes. And uh, we might try some other tools also. So. See what happens. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, and before we get to cutting and using the power tools, we have our... This is not a test. Stay tuned for further instructions. Goggles. Ear pro. Steel toe boots. <laughs> Gloves. Always. Long sleeve shirt. He's got 100% cotton on for... Uh, Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> The goal it's got is, cotton in it. Yeah, it's when sparks fly, you don't yeah. set yourself on fire. Yeah. So. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> There's a hole in the roof of our bus. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> do you like that tool? I do, and this. How do you like the diamond? The roof is a lot thicker than the side panels by like two times at least. Probably. Yeah. So um, that rules out the tin snips that we're going to use. This is too heavy duty for that, so we can't use that. Like those shears? Yeah. The shears uh, are 16 gauge, and this is probably 20. <laughs> well, actually, uh, this is probably. The, the shear's up to 16 gauge. This is probably close to 12. The smaller the number, the bigger the material. Right. Um, so now that we have a hole in here, and I've felt how this handles. Um, Would you feel comfortable doing more with that? Yeah. I, I think just like going for it. I really like how following the line was pretty easy on this. Um, so part of me thinks that, uh, cause what I did was I plunged in and then I backed up slowly to the line, not quite getting to it. And then I walked forward with it. Um, so I think maybe just kind of going for it. Yep. What do you think? Sounds good. How do you feel about the handling? Like pretty solid? You handle it well. Pretty handled. All right. tacked in so it doesn't pop up. Perfect. <laughs> it's just one of those things in the back of your mind you're all like, uh, am I doing this right? <laughs> oh, you're doing great. Thanks. So this was expected because this is wrapped in a curve. I expected this to pop out. So what I did was I didn't cut all the way to the end because this, like whenever I cut this one, it's gonna go bing and it's probably gonna stand straight up in the air. You don't be want to hit you in the face, be careful. Exactly. So you gotta be careful of your tool and stand out of the way, let it do its thing. All four corners were secure like that. I didn't cut all the way to the corners because I expected that to happen. So now we gotta go, uh, not right this second, but uh, we'll take the, the grinding wheel and we'll take the burrs off of all these edges with the grinding wheel, because these are extremely sharp. <laughs> Holy smokes. 
Wow, look at that. Like, I can see directly out. I can see directly out. Directly. <laughs> directly. Yeah. Your face hole. Yeah. Your face hole. So, uh, now imagine, and now this is just kind of getting in front of us now, that there's going to be a piece of wood that lines up and the frame is going to line up with the edge of all of this. And the screws are going to go through the metal into the frame that we're going to make. And the frame's going to wrap around and then the ceiling's going to meet it. Right. So just imagine that. Window number two. Yeah, yeah. One of the big things I've learned in this is as you're cutting, go slow and have a really good body position because as you're holding the angle grinder, you don't want to be leaning into it because whenever it runs on you or tries to walk out of the hole, which it happens, that's it's just spinning real fast, that's what it does. Uh, you've got, you don't want to be on top of it because then you could fall onto it. And so I was trying to just have my arms guide it. So whenever it did walk, uh, then my arms can control it and I wasn't worried about my body just falling onto it. So uh, also keep in mind that these are very sharp, so wear good safety gloves because those are super, super sharp. So the next thing that we're gonna do is do the same thing on the other side because it's gonna mirror it. So we need to move all our scaffolding, our extension cords and everything and uh, pop our chuck line and then do that. kind of tight. <laughs> <laughs> is in a weird position, which I, it wasn't the strongest position, but like, what do you do? Always make a template. in this little spot. <laughs> but we're, we're uh, very fortunate to have a barn that we could uh, do this conversion in. And uh, I think that this is uh, gonna turn out really, really cool. Um, so next step, uh, we're gonna deburr this by getting probably the flap wheel on the angle grinder. And we'll stand inside and uh, just smooth out all the edges 
Uh, that's what all these, all these, this stuff sticking out, they're called burrs. And we'll just take those off. It'll smooth the edges out, won't be as sharp. Still be sharp, but not have something that could snag you. Yeah, you wanna try it? Oh, it's so heavy. You gotta hold that over your head. Okay, you grab a camera? Yeah. Am I doing it right? Yep. Don't skip shoulder day, or as I like to call them, round boys day. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. Brian manned that project pretty, pretty independently. Um, <laughs> but I was there for moral support and to be a camera gal. It wasn't independently. Did, you did a really good job cutting those holes though. We did a good job just like teamwork in it. Teamwork in it. Yeah, it's all about knowing your strengths and going with it. Darn tootin'. I'm an amazing tracer, if you couldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you did a great job tracing. <laughs> But yeah, now we have six giant holes in our roof. So make sure you stay tuned to see how we figure out how to frame them and get the polycarbonate attached to the roof so we don't have any leaks, but we also have an impeccable view. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty freaking sweet. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool is like how we work together to like share ideas on how to get it all put together and just like <laughs> coming to the table with, hey, I've never done this before. She's never done this before. Let's just th sh throw up our ideas <laughs> and figure out how this is gonna work and what makes the most sense because mm -hmm. I'm not wrong, you're not wrong. It's not like, oh, my way's better, your way's better. It's like, hey, let's <laughs> work together with this and make it freaking rock. And I felt like it went pretty smooth. I'd say so too. Yeah. Um, that was definitely a learned skill. I'd yeah. say between the two of us, <laughs> we're both like leaders and we like to be right, which I don't blame either one of us. Yeah, for. I don't blame you for yeah, it. Yeah, I don't blame you for it either if you like to be right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's not really about being right. It's just about like, how can we do this the best? And I think that the more we work together on this project, the better our communication gets. And um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're totally hooked now. Like there were days in the beginning where we were like, this is kind of hard. Or like when we we're working on uh, the radiator and the defroster, like those weren't really my favorite jobs, but these kinds of jobs, like this is the stuff that gets me so stoked because this is our unique footprint. You know, this yeah. is our, our unique way of just stylizing this and making it our own. And I think that's the appealing thing about taking something old and making it new and making it yours is yeah. that in itself is just, you know, putting your unique stamp on it. Yeah. So what can you repurpose in your schoolie build or, you know, in whatever it is that you're doing uh, to make old new because there's still a lot of life left in a lot of different things. And uh, I think that it's really cool yeah. what we're doing with this old school bus. 
turn yeah. it into a tiny home on wheels. Yeah, and if you're doing it too, we would love to hear about your schoolie project or tiny mm -hmm. home project. Um, that's all super exciting to us. And we're definitely looking for people to come visit yeah, once yeah. we get this bus done. Yeah, so if you haven't yet, go ahead and click subscribe and hit that bell to be notified every single time we come out with a brand new video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so thank you. much for watching our videos, liking them, commenting, and sharing them with people that you think that would enjoy them as well. We appreciate you. And until next time, friends. Adventure on. Adventure on. Lots of love. Bye. You're so brave. <laughs> Another inch and a half up because of the overlap of the Lexan, and we didn't want the Lexan to Polycarbonate. To polycarbonate. Because of the opening of where the polycarbonate was gonna like shine through. That one I did really good. Good. Oh my god. Oh. Can you believe that? Holy smokes. <laughs>